Hello everybody, I'm Charlie from Dr. Wen, and welcome along to another daily Doctor Who YouTube video. As promised, I am back, and today I'm going to be ranking all episode 12s of New Who. This includes the episodes Bad Wolf, the Army of Ghosts, The Sound of Drums, The Stolen Earth, The Pandorica Opens, Closing Time, Nightmare and Silver, Death in Heaven, Hellbent, and the Doctor Falls. So this won't include series 11 and 12 since they don't have episode 12, they only have 10 episodes in the series. So yes, today I'm going to be ranking all of them. In general, I have a really, really high opinion on most of these. The vast majority of them do have a score of 9 or above, mainly because they're all part of a finale or part one of a two-part finale. So yes, in general, this is the highest average besides episode 13s, and I'm going to be ranking them. So feel free to put your rankings down in the comments below, and I hope you enjoy this video. Let's get into it. So in 10th place we have the episode Closing Time from Series 6. I've given this a 5.6 because it really isn't anything special. I don't really like it to be honest. This version of Craig, the companion, I think is the worst version of Craig. I preferred him in The Lodger to be honest. Um, I don't like how he's fully converted into a Cyberman and then just switches straight back to being human. It doesn't really make much sense and I don't know, I think Doctor Who uses this kind of thing you know, love wins all qu quite a lot, and it gets quite tedious at times. It's also um, just a, a really annoying setting, actually, going between his house and the shop. It's just quite a clunky plot in general, and the whole scenes where the Doctor speaking to the baby is just weird and completely unnecessary. Um, in general, yeah, it's not the best, but... I I, mean, I still like the Cybermen. I, d I do like how they, um, you know, they've kept the uh, previous Cybus Industries design um, instead of using the more modern design in Nightmare and Silver, which I'm not as keen on. So I am glad that they, you know, reintroduced the Cybermen. We haven't really had a full-on Cyberman episode since the next Doctor, so it's quite good to see them return in New Who. In ninth place, we have Hell Bent from Series 9. This is the finale of Series 9, and lots of people class this as part 2 of um, a two-parter with Heaven Sent. I don't really consider it a two-parter because it's complete, two completely different stories. Um, Heaven Sent is brilliant, I've given it a 9.8 out of 10. Hell Bent, it was a bit of a letdown, and I've given it a 7.6. Lots of people really hate this story. I don't hate it. I actually quite like it. Um, I don't think it's great. I don't think it's brilliant. I think it's just pretty meh and mediocre. It's nothing special. I think lots of people hate it so much because it was such a letdown from the incredible cliffhanger we've got at the end of Heaven Sent. But yeah, this doesn't really work on lots of levels. The, the plot is so annoying how Clara just comes back like every other companion has done. I didn't really like all that um, and how she you know, there was that diner TARDIS that she flew away in, it just really doesn't make sense at all. That, um, there was too many scenes in that kind of database, the Matrix on Gallifrey, I didn't really like that either. Um, and the Doctor's still very good, you know, he's, um, the Twelfth Doctor is my favourite Doctor, so that is one redeeming factor, and it's still pretty cool having a whole episode set on Gallifrey, and those scenes where the Twelfth Doctor was telling Rassilon to get off his planet, that was just brilliant, and this is a bit of a near conclusion to this whole hybrid arc we've got going on. I think it's a bit of a weird sort of plot line, and it wasn't really needed at all. I think this just should have been a series without this, without a kind of overarching plot, so I don't think it really needed it. But anyway, there we go. In 8th place we have Nightmare in Silver from Series 7. This is the penultimate episode of Series 7 before the finale The Name of the Doctor, and lots of people really hate this. However, I've given it a 9.1 because I actually really, really like this episode. Firstly, it's an introduction of the Cyberman, Cybermen again, and although I'm not that keen on the new design, I prefer the Cybus Industries design, it's still really good to see them come back, and I did like how they kept on upgrading themselves so they could like fly and go in water. I did really like like that. I do admit this should have been a two-parter and the Crimson Horror should never exist. I do think this would have been better had it been a two-parter, but the whole scene where um, Clara's kind of leading everyone and into that castle on the amusement park and kind of defeating all those Cybermen with the weapons, that was actually a really fun scene to watch. And um, yeah, this is really good. However, the Doctor could have done a lot more. Most of the time he's just playing chess with his evil self, which I thought was a bit of a meh plot line, even if it did mean separating the companion from the Doctor, which is what I usually quite like.
But yes, this doesn't really deserve the hate, and I still really enjoy it. In seventh place, we have The Stolen Earth, part one of the two-part finale of series four, The Stolen Earth and Journey's End. This is an interesting episode. I've given it a 9.1, mainly because it's just, um, it's a Dalek invasion story of Earth, and we haven't really had one of those in forever since Remembrance of the Daleks, I think. And it's just so, so good. I really like it. Um, I do like how all the companions are kind of reuniting. We have that whole scene with Rose running to the Doctor. Um, you know, we have all, uh, we have that first half of the episode where the Doctor and Donna can't get to Earth, even when the Daleks are invading it and they're trying to look for Earth, and all the companions kind of uniting to call him. I really, really like that. It kind of combines the two spin-offs as well. It's got um the Sarah Jane Adventures and Torchwood. I really like how they're in they're um kind of included in this as well. But um I don't know, I think it feels a bit um detached in a way. I don't know. I think it it could have been a lot better. I feel like it, this whole two-parter is a little bit crammed. However, it does feel a lot like fan service, but it's still really good and it's just a fun Dalek invasion story. Next up, we have the Pandorica Opens from Series 5. This is another part one of a two-part finale, with Pandorica Opens and the Big Bang. And in general, I prefer the Big Bang, however, Pandorica Opens is still very good. I've given it a 9.2 out of 10, um, and yeah, it's it's really, really good. Um, I do like this whole concept of the Pandorica having the most dangerous being in the universe, and that whole cliffhanger at the end with, um, with it... it, um, it just being discovered as being empty, um, and all these enemies of the Doctor were working together to try and push him into the Pandorica. I really enjoyed that, and the whole alliance of all the Doctor's greatest enemies, I actually really enjoyed that entire concept. Um, and it's a brilliant cliffhanger as well, because you know how is the Doctor going to get out of this? He's going to be stuck in there for 2,000 years. And I really, really like um, this whole episode as well. I think lots of people say this episode is stretched out too much, and should have been like 20 minutes or something. I don't know, I think this was still really good, and a really good way to, you know, make use of the time before the, um, the, the finale. I think lots of episodes before the finales are gen generally fillers, and I, I think this is really good. Also, River Song is in it again, and what's not to like about that? Next up, we have Army of Ghosts, part one of the series two finale, uh, um, with Army of Ghosts and Doomsday. In general, I prefer Army of Ghosts to Doomsday, having these creepy, uh, you know, these white and these kind of uh, white, you know, these eerie kind of white and black ghosts walking around. I think that was actually really creepy, and yeah, I think I really enjoyed this episode. I think the Tenth Doctor is really good in this. We have the obviously that really memorable moment where he's got the 3D glasses on, and I did like those first scenes where it was just completely normal Earth. You know, he wasn't launched straight into battle with the Cybermen. It seemed like nothing was wrong until he um, went to Torchwood Institute and. Yeah, there were some ghosts walking around. However, um, this, I don't know, I think it feels a little bit odd. This two-parter is a bit weird for me. Um, I have very mixed opinions on it. You know, my, uh, I think how much I like it changes with every time I view it. But in general, it's still really good. And that whole cliffhanger with the Cybermen and the Daleks going to war, that was really, really good. Next up, we have The Sound of Drums, part two of the three-part finale of series three, which has Utopia, The Sound of Drums, and Last of the Time Lords. Firstly, I just want to say, this version of the Master is brilliant. He isn't my favourite. My favourite is the O Master or Missy. I haven't quite decided yet. Um, however, this is still a really good incarnation of the Master, and I'm really glad we got to, you know, have this. This, this was basically the first story where in New Who where the Master was actually the Master and not a scientist in disguise like in Utopia. This is really good. I think I prefer this to Utopia and Last of the Time Lords. I think that whole cliffhanger where um, the Doctor's kind of being made really, really old, I thought that was really creepy actually. Quite scary seeing this like really old version of the Doctor. Um, and yeah, I, I really like this version of the Master, and I really like this whole, you know, setting with this huge ship in the air, and all the Toclophane invading everything, that scene was really, really enjoyable. And in general, I just really like this, and I don't know, I think this gets quite a bit, bit of hate, I don't think it really deserves, so there we go, I really enjoyed it. 
Next up, we have Bad Wolf, part one of the two-part finale, Bad Wolf and the Parting of the Ways, from series one. This is a brilliant, brilliant episode. I love this so much, like lots of people do. I actually, interestingly enough, prefer Bad Wolf to Parting of the Ways. I think, um, however, I know Parting of the Ways has the regeneration scene, but um, yeah, I think Bad Wolf's just better in general. I do like that whole cliffhanger with this Dalek fleet in the ninth Doctor saying to the Daleks, I'm coming for you. That was really, really good. Um, and yeah, I think the game show setting was a bit weird, but I think it was quite funny, especially with the scenes with um, Jack Harkness and the ninth Doctor. With Rose, I wasn't too bothered, but yeah, this was still just a really enjoyable episode to watch. And not the best finale, but it's still brilliant. And next up, we have Death in Heaven from Series 8. This is part 2 of the two-part finale of Series 8, and it is so, so good. I've given it a 9.5 out of 10, and mainly because it's so sad and so dark and so emotional. It's probably the darkest thing that Doctor Who has ever done, maybe besides Dark Water, part 1 of this two-parter, but it's still really, really sad. We have Clara's boyfriend Danny as a Cyberman. We have Missy, you know, um converting all of these dead people into Cybermen. We have all these Cybermen invading the planet, the Doctor being the president of the Earth. It's just such a good episode, and I wish it had been a bit longer because it seems to go so quickly because it's so good, but I just generally really, really like this story. The whole scene where the Doctor's saluting Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart as a Cyberman, that's really, really sad as well. And yeah, this is just such a good story. I really enjoy it, and it's just generally one of the best finales. But there's, you know, one better than it. The Doctor Falls. I've given this an exact 10.0 out of 10. There is literally nothing wrong with this episode. It has everything. It has Mondasian Cybermen, two masters, it has this creepy black hole spaceship, it has everything. It's so, so good. Lots of people prefer World Enough and Time to The Doctor Falls. I'm one of those rare people who doesn't prefer World Enough and Time. Obviously, I still think they're both flawless episodes. I like this one a teeny bit more, though. Um, Bill as a Cyberman, that's really, really sad. However, her, her you know, um, I, I really like that whole scene where she, like, kind of escapes her Mondasian Cyberman suit. I did really like that because I really liked Bill as a companion, and I'm kind of glad she survived and didn't have all her emotions stripped away from her. We have the two masters who are both brilliant, and the whole scene where the Doctor's saying, where I stand is where I fall, stand with me, fall with me. That whole scene was really, really good. That whole speech, that was just brilliant. Everything about this is awesome, with the whole New Age Cybermen and the Mondasian Cybermen working together to kill all these people. It's just such an interesting concept, and the best finale by far. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, everybody. Like I said, feel free to put your rankings down in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel if you like daily Doctor Who content, and feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it. Next time. So tomorrow, um, actually later today, I'm going to uh, review the fourth Doctor story, Genesis of the Daleks, from series 12. See you then, and goodbye.